Good evening. I'm honored to have been um, asked by the family to speak on behalf of Camilla. Candy was always special to me because of out of all the children, she would sit with me in church. She and her cousin Amari. It was cute because she and Amari had a special vibe that I got to see grow. That is how I got to know her personality. She was always bubbling with energy every time I saw her. I love Cammie especially because of what we had in common, which was we both spoke our minds, we were both energetic, and we both liked to get our way. <laughs> I will always remember the conversation we had when she told me how she loved the color pink. She was playing with her Barbies and she got annoyed about how her parents made her clean her room. <laughs> it stood out to me because it was like a milestone where I remember when she couldn't talk at all and now she was carrying on a full conversation. It gave me a glimpse into the person she was growing into. One of my first memories of Candy is when we went to Chicago and visited Liz's family and friends. It was memorable because I was able to spend time with Candy and her family and be a part of Candy's first road trip. I felt a special closeness to her, and now I'm jealous she gets to see my dad before me. Thank you.
Um, those are just a few things, and then also um, that she had a special bond with my dad. Um, they, you know, she would be so excited. Like sometimes, like man, you gotta be quiet. Like their services start, but they had their thing going on, and that was very special. And, um, thanks to the family for letting us share. Hi, um, my name is Stephanie. Um, Liz was my mentor growing up, and she was my youth group leader, and. Um, she just sacrificed so much for me. She would drive me to uh, leaders in tomorrow every day or every month for competitions and things. And the first glimpse of Cami I got was when um, we were here in Columbus for a competition. And we arranged to meet with Liz during the break of this first and uh, final round. And I remember just walking out of the side of the Ohio State building and I saw her come out of the car and I was like, why is her shirt loose? <laughs> and like, then as I got closer, I saw like Cammie in her belly and I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, and ever since then, I was like, just wondering how can I be involved in her life. I remember I was in high school at the time and I was working at Shoe Carnival and I came across these pink and purple Nikes in the baby section and they were too big for her but I was like, well she'll be in them eventually. I don't want to like risk getting too small of a size and I sent them and then she gave me the picture of her wearing them. Uh, the Cami was just like one of the most curious and confident little girls like you would ever run across. Um, when we, when we went to the Ohio State Capitol building toured there, and she's all in the Supreme Court seats of Ohio, <laughs> standing up there. Um, we went and got, played mini golf, and again, just as confident that she could win, had her own putt and, and ball, and was playing right along with us. Um, we got ice cream, but my favorite memory is um, when we were, it was me and Kayla and Liz were visiting, we were visiting and uh, we were playing apples to apples and Cammy wanted her own hand. She wanted to play right along with us. And apples to apples, the game is that you, like the green card has a statement and then you have red cards and you try to do the funniest statement or the statement that's most logical with the green card. And every time, at every turn, you get to be the judge and pick the best card. And every round, we were picking Cammie's car, and I was like, Cammie, was that really your car? Like, are you serious? And she won the game at the end of the day. We're like, are you serious? Like, she was being three grown women at apples to apples. But, um, Cammie, I will miss your high energy and your loving spirit. You had such an impact in your four years, and you went through more than I could ever imagine in just my 21 years. Um, wow, I wish you were here. It gives me peace to know that you're no longer in pain and now you're here, your spirit is discovering the streets of gold and the mansions and visiting and talking with Moses and all of the saints that have gone before that you've read about in her story books. Now she's actually meeting them. And um, it's just comforting to know that in the end we all do meet God. Her judgment is going to be so quick. He's going to be like, you did exactly what you came here to do. You fought really hard. And just go on and enjoy the rest of what is here to us to offer. And I love you. I'm trying to stand before you today to express my condolences and thoughts. As a mother and grandmother, I must say, I can't even imagine the hurt and pain of losing a child. Sister Liz and Brother Bruce, I want you to know that if there's anything that we can do for you, just let my husband and I know. As I was getting ready to come to Springfield for Brother Charles' homegoing, I get a text from Sister Liz, and when I opened it up, it said, pray for Cammie now. And that word now sounded pretty urgent, so immediately we went to prayer asking God to show mercy. On our way to Springfield, I rode with uh, Cousin Betty and Brother Lamar. We continued to pray again, calling on God to intervene. 
And of course, as the day went by, I was texting Sister Liz and asking her how she was doing. And her last response to me was, she's struggling, but we believe God is about to work. And I said, praise God. After Brother Charles' funeral, I had to rush back home uh, because my daughter-in-law was in the hospital about to deliver. And so uh, while we're waiting in, the, in the, her room, that's when I get a call. And they notified us that Cammie had passed. And of course, I was overwhelmed with emotions because, you know, just coming from a funeral, my daughter, she was in labor for about 24 hours. And, and then finding out that a mother had lost her child, you know, of course, I broke down myself. And one of the nurses that was in the room with us, she said in so many words that God gives these special gifts to certain people for a reason or a purpose. And there's also a passage in one of my worship books that I was reading um, to let me know that God is in control. And it reads, everything that happens to you is either ordained by God or allowed by God. Everything that touches your life must first pass through his hands before it intersects with you. And somehow, he funnels it all towards a glorious outcome for your good in which his name is praised, to be praised. So if... We can trust Him, accepting what we can and don't understand. You may just see that He's only diverting us into the center stage of His will. Because we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. She is now in Jesus' arms. I must say that Cammie has left her little handprint on my mind and my heart. In this space of time, which has forever changed for me. Like I told Sister Liz, you may have carried her for nine months and gave birth to her, but she is a gift to us all. Right. May God bless you, Kelly family. And just like I say, if you want something you never had, you got to do something that you've never done. And I say to all of us, let's live, laugh, and love a little bit harder and not lose faith and not lose hope because life is too short for anything different. May God bless and uphold you and we love you. And as I said before, if there's anything we can do, let us know.
It's called The Answer Is. Um, so um, just hope that it's a blessing. This is mainly for the family and friends that are hurting and whatnot. So I just pray that it is a blessing. This is entitled The Answer Is. Is there any hope for me? Is there any way from this pain I can find relief? You see, trouble seems to come like the sun rises. They always appear and they make you question if God is actually near. North, south, east, west, trouble on every side. It seems as though comfort will not be present in your life. Will God ever come and relieve you of this thing that pierces your heart? I think it's called a uh, pain. It feels like the only option is for grief to stay. Whether you look to your left or look to your right, will always be your plight. And the question continues to wait on you. Is there any hope for me? Is there any way from this pain I can find relief? I understand this question weighs on you, but remember that God has brought so many sins in history through. I would be here for hours if I named each one, so I would just mention some highlights. We call how God can do for Joseph time after time. You see, he was treated poorly by his brothers because it appeared he was lover than the others. Then he was thrown into slavery, but then was that captain of Barbar's house. But then he was excused. He spent two years in prison for a crime he didn't even do. But recall that even through that, God brought him through. Recall that the Israelites were enslaved and spared so much sorrow and woe. So God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh's heart was hard, so he said no. But God sent ten plagues. Then Pharaoh took the six and no. So soon Moses and the Israelites got away. Job literally lost everything. He lost his servants. Is there any hope for me? Is there any hope for the pain I can find relief? I'm here to tell you that the answer is yes. You ask, is there hope? Yes. Well, Titus, is there joy? Yes. Well, come on, is there peace? Yes. Well, is there comfort? Yes. Well, is there strength? Yes. Is there faithfulness from God? Yes. Is there contentment? Yes. Is there a calm in the midst of the storm? Yes. Is there relief? Yes. Is there rest? Yes, it may be a mystery finding, scrapping, and searching for these beautiful words. But with God, the tool to solve that mystery is prayer. And God will be there for you because He loves you and for you He cares. Yes, I understand you ask this question is there any hope for me? Is there any way from the pain I can find relief? I'm here to tell you the answer is yes, through the power, comfort, and faithfulness of Almighty God. There is hope for you. There is a way for the there is a way from if you from if you can find relief. You ask if you can find relief, and the answer is yes. My father passed away nine years ago. So I know what it's like to lose a loved one. But I just want to tell you that in the in the midst of my storm, I found relief. If you ask if you can find relief, and the answer is yes. Thank you for the time. And then there was like a poem that um, I thought was big. So it says, words are so feeble in moments like these. Life is so precious and death such a pain. The depth of your pain I cannot comprehend, but I'll stand alongside you in the darkness of And then to Sister Liz and the Bruce, I love you both dearly, and I will be Good evening. I'm Wanda Keepin, and I'm a Kennedy Sunday school teacher. I just want to say um, I really loved her. She called me Aunt Wanda. And um, I just want to say um, she had a very precious parents. And uh, at first, me and Kennedy didn't hit it off. But after a while, we, just, we did hit it off. <laughs> we did hit it off after a while. It's come to Sunday school, she loves Sunday school. So I just want to say I appreciate her parents and I appreciate going with Candy.
get to know Ken very well. We interacted a few times and like everything that was said about her and energy and excitement and all that, I can certainly say that she left that impression just in the little bit of time that I got to be with her. But I want to say that this is very special to our family. Uh, as I stated before, she was a youth leader in Joliet. And she poured into our young people, my daughters in particular, uh, Brother Kevin and Sister Vicki, dear to my heart, and friends since we were teenagers. And uh, I just want to say that you definitely have our love and prayers. I love this family. I just want you to know that we share in your loss, that we care about how you feel. Um, and just truly thankful to be able to have got a chance to know Cami and all the beautiful memories that she's left behind, and the stories that will be told over and over again. I know that the memory of her will never be lost. It's not often that a person can only be in this world for four years that they accept that dynamic impression. And so I know that God did that for a reason, and he definitely has uh, what it takes to see you all through this difficult time of adjustment. But God's grace is always sufficient, it's more sufficient than we can even talk about. And so I just want to leave you with that encouragement to let you know that we love you, we're here for you. Anything that we can do to be a blessing to this family, we just let our family know. And we'll, we'll try to deliver to the best of our ability. Truly thank God for the um, Kellys. Having had an intimate uh, relationship with you all, we've known each other for years, you know, seeing each other off and on. And I, I have nine grandchildren, so I don't even, I can't comprehend the loss of a grandchild. But God knows, and His grace is sufficient for everything that we go through. We love you all, don't know anything but good about Paris. And we truly love Bruce with other things. <laughs> okay. Um, my son knows you in a personal way. They grew up, they grew up together, and they kind of they kind of know each other. And he said you're a good guy. <laughs> and so I thank God for that. Uh, just want to let you all know that we grew up Good evening. I'm Sister Julie from the Joliet Congregation. Um, I just wanted to give my love to the family. Um, love you all very much. Um, Liz has been a very special part of the family and my daughter spoke earlier, Stephanie. Um, she has always been there for Stephanie and I really appreciate that. And I wanted to come this way to give my support on all that you've done for, for my children. Um, Stephanie loves you very much and she loved Candy very much. And I didn't um, know Candy very well, but I'm glad that um, I had those pictures that we took together. And I was wearing a, a flower jacket, and I plan to wear that tomorrow. And I, I just, you know, held it close to me. Um, Candy was a beautiful little girl, and God blessed you very much. So I just want to extend my love to you all, and just thank you for being just such a loving support to my God. Thank you. Love you all.
know, I was reading this morning, and uh, I think a little campy. I'd say she had a mind of her own, <laughs> full of energy. Uh, last time I actually seen her in action was at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> she was having a good time. I read a scripture this morning. It said, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of him, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and becomes little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I told Brother Bruce, Cammy got a free pass. <laughs> you know, the, the shape that our world is in, the wickedness that's taking place, Cammy got a free pass. <laughs> she got a free pass. It says, whoever, who, whosoever, therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Cammy is rejoicing. Jesus said, come unto me. So, in spite of our broken hearts, in spite of the good memories that we have, take comfort in knowing that Jesus has welcomed Cammy. She got a free pass this evening. All, I mean, the way this world is going, we have no idea where things are going to end up. Am I right? Because things are, things are upside down, so to speak. But little Kim got a free pass. Jesus took the child, set him in the midst. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Cam is enjoying the kingdom of heaven, you see. Amen. We can take comfort in knowing that. We can take comfort in knowing that. We want the family to know that we're praying for you, that God will give you that comfort and assurance to know. Jesus loved the little children. He loved the little children. Amen. You know, the disciples, you know, kind of love it. No, bring them to me. Bring me the little children. Then he touched him. Amen. So we can take comfort in knowing that this evening. And Cameron got a free pass. <laughs> free pass. Amen. Amen. That's comfort, a comforting thought to know this evening. Right. Amen. Bless you.
I love you and I'm this way. I asked mom if I can love it and she told me not yet. But I want you to come back so we can go to hands again. That's all in heaven. And when I see you again, we will continue to play. I hope you can be left on the
find me with a tall man. So, his name is Todd. He's called the teacher. She called him the boy. She would ask, where is the boy? We'd be in the basement, and I might be coming up the stairs, and she'd be peeping down, looking, uh, want to play, but she wouldn't come down. And then she'd see me, and she'd say, where is the boy? She, uh, like Sister Wonder, she would never let me just really get close to she'd smile and she'd hide behind the pants. And, and she wouldn't never just put really her up in there. She never was was important. And we'd play on the stairs and, and she would so she'd hold on. She, she's a tough little girl of candy world and uh, we really don't miss her. Even though my heart 
is great. <laughs>
always wonder what life would be like with the um, love and the plays and the roost as all you can do, like all you can do. And I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh! 
documents and, and had to uh, deal with legal things and and uh, he was retired so he would just make it his point to go and be with them and um, he liked the, uh, the children liked the fact that my husband would play with them and uh, they would like to pretend that they were going to scare him and he would play along with it and then they would go running off, and, and then uh, they'd come back again to scare him again. And he, he just uh, enjoyed the charm and enjoyed the charm. So we thank, we thank God for the short life that he gave her to us. Um, we thank the Lord for Sister Liz and Brother Junior and good parents. And just thank the Lord for good examples of parents that truly love their children. And they would do all that they can to provide for them. And we just want uh, to encourage you, Sister Liz, Brother Junior, God is still with you. So just keep your hand in his and we'll just bring you all the way. So we just love you. Tell again. Amen.
sort of every show came from the Bible. At this time, we want to dismiss you. You may feel free to visit the Bible. We want to dismiss you. Brother Jeff Wolfs, he's going to come up and he's going to dismiss us at this time. Can we all stand and let's look to the Lord in prayer? <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, dear God, we thank you, dear God. Dear God, in all things, dear God, we want to give you thanks, Lord God. Dear God, in the good times and the bad. Lord, we're thankful, dear God, to be able to gather, dear God, for, uh, dear God, this service tonight, Lord God. Dear God, for little Candy, Lord God. And dear God, she was loved, dear God. And dear God, we know, dear God, now she, dear God, has eternal life, dear God, in heaven with you, dear God. And dear God, that is, dear God, something to rejoice about, dear God. Dear God, we're not sad, dear God. Dear God, that is all our goal, dear God. Dear God, is to please you in this life and make it to heaven. So, dear God, we're thankful, dear God. Thankful for her life and thankful for her family, Lord God. Dear God, we pray, dear God, that you uh, comfort, dear God, the Kelly family, Lord God. Dear God, we know you are the God of all comfort. Yeah. Dear God, we pray, dear God, that you bless the Lord. Amen. Dear God, we're thankful, dear God, for everyone that was able, dear God, to attend this service, Lord. Dear God, some coming from far, dear God, and near, dear God. We're thankful for that. Thankful for your traveling mercies, Lord. And dear God, we pray that you continue to remember the remainder of this service, dear God. Even on the funeral tomorrow, Lord, have your divine way. We thank you. We love you. We appreciate all that you've done, all your goodness. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.